We've all used a network switch at some point. Whether it be on your router or purchased separately, network switches are practically in every home. However, finding a managed switch at an affordable cost has always been a challenge. Well, with a Raspberry Pi, a custom build, or an old router, you can make it into a managed network switch. And in this episode, I'll show you how to do just that. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this video, we're making a managed switch with OpenWT and a Raspberry Pi. To begin, I did get quite a few comments in my last VLAN video that the process has changed with OpenWT 21.02. In prior versions, VLANs were created with software SWconfig, but now a different method is used, known as Distributed Switch Architecture, or DSA. In this video, your questions are finally answered as you learn how to make VLANs using this new DSA method. DSA is different than SWconfig in that DSA uses VLAN filtering over bridge devices, where each physical port on the router is associated with a network device in OpenWRT. This allows you to use standard user space commands, like IP, to configure the switch. This comes baked in with the Linux kernel, so it has a high degree of stability and testing within the Linux kernel community. SWconfig is the legacy way of creating VLANs in OpenWRT, where only a single port is shown for configuration, thereby limiting the amount of user space abilities and limiting the information that can be obtained from the switch. Now that we have a high level understanding of the differences, let's take a look at the hardware. For this demonstration, I'll be using two Raspberry Pis. One is a Raspberry Pi 4 router from a prior video, which you could check out in the corner here. This Pi will act as the managed switch. My second Raspberry Pi is a Compute Module 4 with a DF Robot IoT carrier board. This Pi will be acting as the router. I'll be assembling this little guy into a wireless router with an acrylic case. To see that video when it comes out, get subscribed below. With some knowledge of the software and hardware, I think we're ready to make some VLANs and set up our managed switch. To get started, we'll create our VLANs on the CM4 with the DF Robot IoT Router Carrier Board. I've already flashed OpenWT onto it, so let's get to it. First, connect to your OpenWT router and log into Lucy at 192.168.1.1 with the root username and password. From here, we'll click on the Network tab, then Interfaces. On this page, we'll click on the Devices tab and Add Device Configuration button at the bottom. On the Device Type dropdown, we'll change that to Bridge Device. For Device Name, we'll call it BR. For Bridge Ports, we'll use ETH0 and ETH1. We'll chuck off Bring Up Empty Bridge. Then we'll move over to the Bridge VLAN filtering to create our VLANs. Check off Enable VLAN Filtering. Towards the bottom, click Add. Here, we'll go with a VLAN ID of 1. For port ETH0, we'll leave it as Do Not Participate, which is represented by a hyphen. For port ETH1, check off egress untag. There is also a primary VLAN ID, but you don't typically need this check. This name is a bug, and it's technically supposed to be port VLAN ID. What this signifies is the main untagged VLAN ID for that port for ingress traffic. This is only necessary when ingress tagging is not equal to egress tagging. In most scenarios, you do not need to explicitly define the PV ID. To further explain this, refer to the link in the description below from the OpenWT community. You will see examples there with port VLAN ID checked, and that's okay, as that does not affect the regular functionality and is supposed to actually make VLANs function the same as it did with SWConfig. Then we'll click Add again and create VLAN ID 2. This time, egress untag VLAN ID 2 on port ETH0 and leave port ETH1 as is and not participating. Click Save to finish. Return to the Interfaces tab 
And here, we'll set up our interfaces for each VLAN. Using the existing LAN interface, we'll edit it and change the device to Software VLAN BR1 and click Save. Next, we'll delete the existing WAN interface to make room for the new LAN2 interface that will use VLAN ID2. Click the Add New Interface button. For the name, we'll call it LAN2. The protocol will be static address and the device will be BR2. Then click Create Interface. In the expanded options, assign the IPv4 address as 192.168.2.1 or any other IP address you'd like. For NetMask, we'll go with the standard 255.255.255.0. In the Firewall Settings tab, assign the Firewall Zone to LAN. In the DHCP Server tab, click Set up DHCP Server button and then click Save. Lastly, we'll delete the WAN interface. Now that we have finished all of our changes, we can click Save and Apply. If we did this right, the screen should reload, otherwise we locked ourselves out. Once complete, we have finished creating the VLANs in OpenWRT using DSA and bridges. We'll test this out quickly by plugging in an Ethernet cable to the second port, which should assign us the IP address in the network range of 192.168.2.1 forward slash 24. As you can see, it did just that, and we can even log in to Lucy at 192.168.2.1. Just to note, you can also create VLANs without bridging. This is done in the Devices section as well. Click Add Device Configuration, and in the pop-up, all you have to do is set the device type to VLAN 802.1Q. Choose your base device, such as ETH1 or ETH0, and define the VLAN ID. Then you save this and use it the same way you would as with a bridge VLAN device, like creating network interfaces. Now that we understand VLAN configuration, we'll plug in the Ethernet cable back into the first port to continue our next steps. Now we move on to making our managed switch. This will be easier, but first we'll prepare our VLANs for the switch. Let's log into Lucy on the router once more and get back to our bridge interface and edit the VLAN filtering. Here, we're going to tag the port ETH0 with VLAN ID 1 and 2. This will pass the tag traffic along to our Raspberry Pi 4, acting as our managed switch. Click Save and then Save and Apply. Then plug in our Ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi and log into Lucy at your specific IP address or if using the default network address 192.168.1.1. Here we're going to repeat about the exact same steps as we did when creating VLANs on the router. We go to Network, Interfaces, then Devices tab. We're going to utilize the existing bridged interface here instead of creating a new one. Click Configure next to the BRLAN bridge device. Select ETH1 to add it to the bridge and then check off Bring Up Empty Bridge. Click on the Bridge VLAN Filtering tab and click Add Twice to add two VLANs, one and two. For port ETH1, I will tag it with VLAN1 and 2. This is the upstream Ethernet port that will connect to the router. 
and will receive VLAN traffic from the router. We also refer to this port as the trunk port. For port ETH0, untag VLAN1 and leave VLAN2 as is, or not participating. Then click Save. Return to the Interfaces tab and edit the LAN interface. Here, change the device from BRLAN to BRLAN.1. Then, change the IP address to 192.168.1.2. Click on the DHCP Server tab, and under General Setup, check off Ignore Interface and click Save. Lastly, click Add New Interface and name it LAN2. Choose Unmanaged for the protocol, and Device, choose BRLAN.2. Then click Create New Interface, and then click Save. We made this interface as a placeholder for when we'd want to use VLAN 2. Then click Save and Apply. With that, wait for the configuration changes to complete. Since you have changed your interface IP, Lucy will not reload for you. That's fine, as we'll open another Lucy tab. After those changes are complete, we need to do one more thing. We'll connect the router and the managed switch together with an Ethernet cable and plug it in to the trunk ports we tagged on the router and the managed switch. If done correctly, you should now have a managed switch setup. To test out these changes, First, we'll disconnect the Ethernet cable on the Raspberry Pi 4, and then we'll reconnect it. Then, we'll try logging into OpenWRT at 192.168.1.2. This is now the IP address of the managed switch. Great, it works. To further test, Try logging into the router using the IP address of 192.168.1.1. This helps ensure that communication between the router and the switch are working, though simply getting an IP address assignment should be confirmation enough. As you can see, we can log into the router as well. If you wanted to further test this out, you could by changing the ETH0 port on the managed switch to be assigned VLAN 2 and not VLAN 1. Then you can use the placeholder interface for VLAN 2, change the protocol to static address, configure their IP address, and then save it. Once done, you should see the same behavior as for VLAN 1, but now for the VLAN 2 network. I'm not going to save these changes. I just wanted to demonstrate how it's done. As for using VLANs for Wi-Fi, it's simply a matter of assigning the desired VLAN interface as the Wi-Fi network. You would do this by clicking Network, then Wireless. Click on Edit next to the SSID OpenWRT. Under Interface Configuration and the General tab, choose your network from the dropdown and click Save, then Save and Apply. This process should work for a DSA-enabled OpenWRT instance on any hardware. But for Raspberry Pi 4, I noticed this didn't work as expected. After reaching out in the OpenWRT forum, I found out that I could not accomplish this for Raspberry Pi 4 using DSA. However, I was instructed on a different way to get VLANs working for Wi-Fi without using DSA. I won't get into how I did that, but I will share my forum post and configuration files in the description for you to try out for yourself for VLANs on Wi-Fi, along with my DSA configuration files. And that wraps up DSA VLAN configuration and making a managed switch in OpenWRT 21.02.
Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Would you set up a managed switch in OpenWRT? Or would you just buy one? Drop me a comment below so we could talk about it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.